Hello and welcome to Forgotten Temples. Now this is the kind of dusty road I travel, but this quite literally is a superb road. Look, note how it's pretty much flat and that's all I ever asked for in a road. Now I have been up and down this road numerous times looking for a temple well that it was just so elusive I could never find it. I could never find any photos, uh, any any reference to it at all on the internet. There was absolutely nothing. But I knew it was in there somewhere. Well, whilst meandering around doing something else, I've discovered it. And there's not a lot to show you. But I'm just so pleased I'm going to put him on film because in this video, you are going to have two temples because there's not an awful lot to show. But he's a find. So let's go introduce ourselves. Now here is the absolute beauty in what I do. Going to places you will never see again in your life. And that's quite an exciting thing, you know? You get on your back. And I think this is why I appreciate these things so much because you think, I'm here once, that's it. Soak it in and enjoy it. And really, I should have spotted this temple, shouldn't I? Because look, he's just off the road here. But <laughs> it's, it's not exactly the ideal location, is it? There's this big ditch that you and I are going to have to clamber up. And when I say ditch, this is pretty much like a solid wall. So I'll have to pause you for just a moment. And here he is, Trepang Shambag. And it's easy to miss. You're going along that road thinking he's going to be deeper into that uh, bit of jungle and he isn't. He's right by the road, as he always has been, because that road has been there for centuries. Roads don't move. If you look at the map of London and you look at the Roman maps of London, the roads are in the same place. And that's probably why he was here, you see, for the weary traveller who could stop and ask for blessings or maybe something on his mind or, you know, to get counsel or guidance from, you know, a wise old priest or something. But there's not an awful lot to show you here. We do have this magnificent lintel that's on the ground and what we can see just about in the centre here, look at this, you see, these are the ears here and this is the face and there's the trunk, you see, it's an elephant. And the delightful, delightful elephant. But unfortunately, he's all ignored. I'm not even going to walk round this temple because it is literally a pile of bricks. I'm going to step round the face of the elephant because I would not be as rude to tread on him. And what we see is one of the pillars is still here. The other would be buried probably under here. And as we look in, we can see one thing. There's always something, isn't there? Every temple has something. And look, we can see some of the you know, engineering that was done with these larger blocks to give it a nice strong base and then the bricks. But look, the bricks have now just made a cave-like shape because he has just fallen. And looking round the temple, it is literally a pile of bricks and half bricks and small pieces. So we can consider this place a bit like a local parish church. We have this quite prominent road and up and down here traders and travellers would have gone. And where better place to stop for the night? A little bit of sanctuary in the jungle, a safe place to rest up. And that would have been its purpose. And its name would have been known far and wide for that. You know, he is the place to meet and we'll do the exchange maybe. But this is the sadness of all the temples like this, is every single person that was ever here or ever involved with this site has dissipated in the wind. There is no record of any of them, not the person that built it, not the people that worshipped here, and not that ageing priest and his apprentices that once lived here. 
and that is terribly sad isn't it but at least you and I have been here and we have taken note and I'll raise my hat to all those that are not here and say thank you for this little memory this little ancient gem because I'm glad I found you at long last it's been on and off for nearly a year I've been trying to find this place so it's brought a smile to my face now on to that next temple I promised you and here we are out in the countryside as we close in on our second temple and it's this way and often I'll say that I believe the temple gods are with me and yet again remarkable coincidences and alike are compounding as we close in on this our second part of this video and it's this lovely little gem here and as I say it's Lich or Lech Nyang have a look there he is now the coincidences here are quite simply staggering because I filmed this temple many, many months ago. And then when I got home, the audio files had corrupted and it was a day's work wasted. You wouldn't believe how frustrating it can be bringing these videos to you sometimes. But the gold, the, the payoff, the glory, when it goes jackpot is just, ah, oh, it is a mental orgasm. But now I think about it, all orgasms are mental, aren't they? Well, anyway, less about orgasms, more about this mighty erection. This temple, I am due to come back to, but I've just bumped into it. Now, that isn't too strange, is it? Um, but what is strange is the first video you just saw, the first temple you just saw, um, I then went on to another temple that had the same name as this one. The only two with the, two, the same names that I've ever come across. So they're both Li or Lech Niang. But the other one was so awe-inspiring, I made an entire a video for it um, to come out on its own because it was so special. And then I go from one, get lost, bump into the next one, which has the identical name. And oddly, the very temple I wish to come back to. So yet again, the temple gods have guided me here. And there's not an awful lot to show you of this one, but let me show you who dwells here, because I believe just there is my favorite god. And he's quite the beauty, isn't he? Sitting atop of his little hill here. And <clears throat> there's really not a lot. We're just gonna poke our head around the side here so you can get a bit of a view as to his condition and so on. Only a bit of his uh, spire has come off there, but he's looking pretty damn good. Now I said we'd see a god and so we shall because I believe up here is for me the god of all gods and he is my absolute favourite because we see these three, these three elephant heads and atop there I believe just there, can you see him right in the center of your screen? Let me point to him if I can. There he is, right there. Um, that, I believe, is Indra, the god of thunder and lightning and storms. And he's quite the character, you know, because he got in all sorts of trouble with the other gods for drinking, you see, and cavorting with the ladies, you see. He was a bit of a bad boy in some ways, but he was a most resplendent god and he did look after people, so, Mum, some may say he was a bit wayward, but to me, he was just uh, a lad living his life. Away from Indra we come and we have a look inside as to who dwells here. And there isn't an awful lot, is there? We have what looks like a figure that has now, you know, disappeared. And as always, you know, the head has been chopped off. It's impossible for me to say what that was. Um, it's, it's barely recognisable as a human. But, you know, there would have been similar statues in other places. So we would be able to define as to what that once was. But what we can see is the temple is speaking to us. Yes, it is. Can you see it? I'll give you a moment. 
Aha, you didn't get it, did you? It's over here, look. Have a look. There. Look at this ancient writing. And this obviously would be religious text or it would be praising a king or a high priest or someone like that. So there we are. Words in ancient Sanskrit written all those centuries ago, now in an abandoned city. Isn't it incredible to think that? And I would estimate this temple to be about 10th century by the use of the bricks here and the way the doors have these lovely magnificent lintels and so on. They're not all masonry, they are predominantly brick. But I'm wandering this way to conclude this video down this little country lane because this is so often the wonderful payout that I get um, when I go hunting for temples. And right here is the guaranteed payoff even when there is failure in what I do. You see, the temple we've just seen is one where the audio files corrupted and I, it was in my diary to come back and film yet again. A day wasted. But weirdly, going to a temple with the identical name and then getting lost brought me to this temple. And weirdly, I also needed a temple that was not worthy, shall we say, of its full own video. And I just, it's coincidence after coincidence. And getting lost here is a privilege. Have a look at this backdrop. Isn't it absolutely incredible? I mean, this is what I travel through day after day, week and month after month, and soon I will hit one year of doing this as I start to close on my 225,000th mile. And that's quite a thing, isn't it? 25,000 miles through this, getting a twinge of jealousy? Well, don't. Get out there and have your own adventure. I always say that. So please, it doesn't have to be far. There's parks, there's woods, there's grassland. Go out there, introduce yourself to a wild animal or a wild person, but have an adventure. Please do. As always, this has been Mr. B, Forgotten Temples, wishing you absolutely nothing but the very best. You take good care now. Ah.